Uh, I just heard what was either a pack of uh, coyotes or potentially wolves. Guys, I'm not sure what that is down there. Maybe it's some kind of a mountain lake creature. Oh, this is now an emergency. I did have to call for help. Oh man, this fire feels really, really good. It uh, is definitely below freezing. Guys, welcome back to another episode. We are heading up into the mountains on the very first mountain lake fishing adventure of the year. Now, right here, I have a case of US military MREs. That's the only food that we're gonna bring uh, with us up into the mountains. This case right here was manufactured in 2018. It's technically expired. Uh, let's see what's in here. Uh, all right. So inside this case, we have uh, 12 individually uh, wrapped MREs. This one right here is spaghetti with beef and sauce. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and take a look at uh, which MRE we're gonna take up into the mountains with us uh, because there's no guarantee that we're actually gonna catch uh, trout. This is still early in the mountain season. The lake might still be frozen over. I tried getting to another mountain lake here yesterday, but the access road wasn't even available yet because we're talking really high elevation uh, where all the roads are still snowed in. But according to my research, we should be able to make it to this lake. But in case it's a bust, I wanna make sure we don't starve up there. <laughs> now, let's see here, chicken chunks, white cooked. <laughs> that doesn't sound too bad. Elbow macaroni and tomato sauce. Eh, not sure about that. Ooh, this is a chunky MRE. What's inside this one here? Menu 10, chili and macaroni. Ooh, I've heard this is a popular one. Meatballs and marinara sauce, chili with beans. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go with this uh, chili and macaroni. I've heard really good things about this MRE. All right, we're gonna get the rest of these MREs uh, back in here. Remember, we always wanna store this stuff in a cool, uh, dry place for optimum storage life. There we go, and guys, it's a total mess in here. I'll tell you guys in a second what's in these two boxes. Actually, I'll tell you right now. It's a bunch of bullet lures. I made, uh, each one here has 100 bullet lures in it, getting ready for the NWFS survival uh, pouch launch. I'll have a bunch of care packages ready for you guys as well. All right, we gotta get uh, this stuff inside before we take off too, but uh, I just wanted to announce that Sunto is gonna be working with us on the NWFS survival pouch, which the survival pouch drop is happening this week. Stay tuned, NW Fishing Secrets. Dot com and I'm just testing uh, all of these compasses right here. Check this out. This is actually very interesting on a compass is that the, you can see the needle is pointing off about 16 degrees to the east, which is magnetic north. This line right there, the black line, that's true north. So I'll probably show you guys in a future video uh, how to do some orienteering with a compass. But man, super, super stoked. Soon to a baby will come in every single survival pouch. All right, let's get these guys into the shop here. They're glowing in the dark. That's crazy. After sitting in the sun for a while, they're all glowing. That way you can also uh, do some orienteering at night. Now in one of the next episodes, we're gonna do a range upgrade as well. I've got a bunch of lumber in that pile there and we're gonna rebuild our target stand and make it so that we can have some more steel gongs and stuff out there. We're gonna build like a little range hut too. So stay tuned for that. But today we're going fishing because I've got the truck completely loaded up with fishing gear already. Man, you guys, I'm so hoping that we can access this lake here. It's been so long since we've been up in the mountains fishing for trout. I'm just like, oh man, I'm excited, guys. The animals have all been taken care of. Goats are fed, chickens broke out, and they are roaming free, but you know what? That's okay. Ooh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I gotta show you guys, gotta show you guys something really crazy. One last farm update, and then we're heading into the mountains. This is crazy what we did out here. Check out uh, this pasture right here. It's a small pasture that I haven't really been doing anything with at all. So I did update you guys on Instagram about what I'm doing right here. You can see this pasture uh, was kind of raked. We had, I think it's called a spring tooth harrow. I'm just now learning all of the farm stuff 
Uh, guys, as part of coming out here and buying the mountain fishing farm is learning about homesteading, learning about farming, and trying to grow uh, my own food. And I've grown vegetables before, but one thing I have never done before is growing grains. So right over here, this part of the pasture, right there, from this block to there's another block right over there. Uh, my neighbors and I were working together on this project, actually. We're kind of making it like a community project, and we planted a bunch of wheat. The whole project started with raking up this field here, just kind of breaking up and aerating. We spread a whole bunch of wheat seed across that whole area back there. After that, I got a big roller and just kind of rolled the seed in so that it's pressed into the ground. We had a whole bunch of rain here last week and that is kind of why we timed seeding uh, the wheat uh, here this week uh, is so that we can use the natural rain to irrigate that whole place and hopefully, hopefully we'll get a good rate of germination and we can grow us a whole bunch of wheat. <laughs> no chemicals, no pesticides, no nothing, just 100% natural. Uh, is how I'm gonna try and do this. Growing and harvesting the old fashioned way, only hand tools, no machinery is gonna be allowed. So I'll keep you guys updated on uh, the wheat farming <laughs> adventures in future episodes here as well. This whole area here was once a big luscious forest, but uh, there's actually a few trees still left up there, but it pretty much all burnt down. And uh, right up there, you can still see the snow in the mountains. And that's uh, what I'm a little worried about is that we might run into that snow right there, but there's only one way to find out. We're getting awfully close. Man, look at this guys. Yeah, the road is still covered in snow uh, up here. It's these uh, wooded areas here where the snow just doesn't uh, quite burn off like it does out in the clearings. Oh crap. Huh. All right, we're stuck. We're stuck. We're gonna have to throw her into four wheel drive here, baby. All right, we're, we're moving again. Uh, guys, if it gets a whole lot worse, we might need to call it and uh, go somewhere else. But we're so close. We are so close to the trailhead. Oh man, guys, we are, I mean, like on snow, snow. Like <laughs> that's all that we're driving on right now is just thick, compacted snow. Now the biggest thing we need to make sure is that we don't get all the way up here and then get stuck. Cause we're heading kind of back downhill a little bit right now. And uh, that's the last thing you want to do is when you're out four wheeling or uh, somehow getting yourself into sticky situations, you're already in four wheel drive, pushing your rig uh, to the limits. And if you get stuck then, that's a bad idea. It's always better to go in and two wheel drive. And then if you get stuck, you got four wheel drive to save yourself. But we're going full send today, baby. We are going full send into the mountains. All right, I think uh, what we're gonna do is just park here and we're gonna continue hiking the rest of the way. I don't want to risk getting ourselves even deeper into the snow. So we're just gonna leave the uh, truck here and uh, grab our gear and go on uh, by foot. All right, got our fishing poles. Man, this is crazy. We're just, I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere here, guys. Man, there she goes, truck is out of sight. Keep in mind guys that staying with your vehicle uh, could save your life. And so only ever leave your vehicle if you break down somewhere. Uh, if there's really, if, if you know you can get 
out and walk the rest of the way. You can use your vehicle for shelter uh, to get out of the elements. You can keep extra clothing in there. You can keep extra water and food. If you plan things out, uh, you could actually survive probably just out of your car for easily a week uh, or two. But if you get caught out in the elements with just yourself, and maybe if you're lucky, a pack, an NWFS survival pouch, of course, you know, you might uh, last a few days, but definitely not as long as if you had a well-stocked uh, car that you could stick with. I just heard something. That was a weird sound, very weird sound. Right now is kind of when the bears are coming out of hibernation, so we're just gonna kind of keep an eye out uh, for things. Now, one of the best preventatives actually for uh, getting in trouble with bears or mountain lions is just making a lot of noise. Some people have big bells that they'll throw on their backpacks, or if you're in a group, just have a loud conversation. <laughs> so it's probably helping <laughs> that I'm talking to you guys right now. Thank you for keeping me safe from the bears. Look at these guys, all these little baby pine trees. Ponderosa pines, they're just beautiful, beautiful trees, but this is just a prime example of the old forest burning down and then the young, the fresh forest comes back to life. I think this here is a good spot. I just take a little break and uh, maybe we can dig into that MRE. Just get a little bit of food into us. Or if you're out uh, hiking, make sure you got little snacks or something to feed on so that you can maintain your energy levels. Uh, because up here, especially at these higher elevations too, you've got less oxygen in the air, so you're gonna be breathing harder already and you need to maintain those energy levels. Oh yeah, here it is. Menu number 10, chili and macaroni, legendary. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside this MRE right here. Looks like this right here is probably our main course, chili and macaroni. Peppermint candy rings. I was hoping for like a cookie or something. Applesauce cake. Yes, yes, that's that, that counts like a cookie. Cheese spread with jalapeno, a beef snack strip. We'll save that uh, for the rest of the hike. Carbohydrate electrolyte beverage powder. Basically the reason they throw these powdered like Gatorades in essentially, like a military Gatorade, is it gives you the salts, the electrolytes, as well as the sugars to just keep on going. I mean, this is just pure energy in a bag right here. Oh, my favorite, a vegetable cracker, yes. All right, most of this we can save uh, for a nice lunch at the lake here later, but we're just gonna open up this accessory packet and just hope that we find some coffee in here. What do we got here? Yes, look at this. G genial, genial instant coffee right there. Ooh, creamer, nice. This guy here is just our little solid fuel uh, stove, an Espit stove. I haven't used this guy here in a long time, actually. Now, I don't have any water with me, so this snow is actually perfect for our situation here. It's pretty clean snow, not perfect, but that's all right. We're gonna boil it down. Ooh, there's something yellow there. Or never, never eat yellow snow, boys and girls. There we go. Got us a nice little level cooking surface. And then right here, I've got some fuel tablets. These guys are uh, hexamine. It's a solid fuel. And we just put these guys into our stove right down there. And something they give you inside these MREs, as well as a pack of matches. Always takes the solid fuel just a little bit of time to get started. It's a very, just kind of a clear, like a blue flame right now, little yellow at the top. There we go, you can see the flame is going. All right. Now that we got that flame going, let's uh, see how long it takes to melt down. And whenever you're boiling snow to get water, uh, you just need to make sure that you shake it 
every once in a while and make sure that you work all that snow back down uh, into the pot because sometimes what happens, especially with very fluffy dry snow, is that the water evaporates and boils off at the bottom faster than the snow can melt and sink down and you'll often burn the bottom of your pot. But you can see in this case, we're actually melting the snow really nicely. That pot was filled all the way to the top with snow. But right now we've only got about one third of the pot filled with water. So whatever snow you pack in, just know that you're gonna have a lot less water in the end. Something we can just do here is throw in some dry twigs and stuff into the solid fuel stove. That way we can conserve those hexamine tablets. Always good to have um, extra fuel on hand. That's just one of the benefits of these little solid fuel stoves is you can really throw anything flammable in there. Look at this, we have a boiling pot of water. Or all these little wrappers, always just have a little spot in your pack where we can just stuff that in and uh, pack out everything that we brought up here with us. Still really hot let's go ahead and set that coffee uh, over there in the snow just to cool off a little bit and we're going to take a look at this uh apple cake Ooh. 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 look at that i i can smell it it's oh Ooh, it smells uh a... <laughs> there's a <laughs> that wasn't very pretty i didn't see that on the back side so <laughs> apple and cinnamon very fruity Little, maybe, maybe there's even little pieces of nut in there. It's soft, but not like fluffy. It's more of like a dense cake. Let's just go ahead and take a, take a bite here. 6 year old applesauce cake. Mm-hmm. That's not bad at all. Oh, it's so hot, but so good. A little bit of bitterness to the coffee, maybe it's just the age of the coffee or it could also be the creamer that might've just gone slightly rancid. I mean, what's there not to love? Coffee, creamer, cake. <laughs> Man, this is, mm, mm, yeah, it's good stuff. These military MREs are often just like loaded with carbs and stuff to kind of keep you going. But if we want some actual good nutrition, we're gonna have to catch a trout. So we gotta get off our butts here. All right, I was rushing there. <laughs> I guess coffee is just never meant to be rushed. Ah. Ooh, we still have our beef snack strip. Six-year-old beef stick. This is still in good shape. The vacuum ceiling is still intact. Mm. It smells really good. Let's go ahead and try a bite. It's really dry. Is this supposed to be like boiled first? All you military guys like, is this normal? Are these things always that dry? Mm. Ah. Uh, I just heard what was either a pack of uh, coyotes or potentially wolves. Um, there are a lot of wolves in this area here, of course, as well as the bears and the mountain lions. Now, normally wolves would not worry me uh, at all. It's just that we're coming out of winter and if there are any uh, wolves that had a rough winter and they might be starving, at this point, uh, they might be looking for easier prey uh, than animals, and that, that could be the time when they might uh, go after a human. So what we're just gonna do is uh, throw our uh, protection onto our person instead of just having it in the pack. Remember, always better to have it and not need it than uh, need it and not have it. Being attacked by any wildlife, uh, including bears and mountain lions, is extremely rare. But uh, whenever you are out in the backcountry, especially when it's just you, 
uh, it's probably not a bad idea to have some kind of protection on you. Man, guys, look at this place. We're getting really, really close. Uh, my biggest fear right now is that we might run into uh, the lake still being frozen, but we're about to find out. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Oh no. No, the lake's, there's ice on the lake, but I'm seeing some water. There's some water. That is incredible. You can see uh, that end of the lake there. Uh, there's a creek runoff, snow runoff from the mountain coming down. And that area there is thawed up. Then the entirety of the lake is frozen. But right over there where there's a creek coming in, I'm seeing uh, some unfrozen water there. Now, some of you guys might uh, recognize uh, these lakes here. There's actually a second mountain lake right there. Not sure if we'll fish this one. We'll see how the other one does first. What I'm just doing right now, since the water is so clear and we're at a high elevation, seeing if I can uh, spot any trout swimming around under the surface. Take a couple of minutes to do a little bit of observation and reconnaissance. Oftentimes, five minutes of uh, looking around and seeing what's going on can save you hours of unsuccessful fishing. But I'm not seeing anything over at that lake there right now, so we're just going to continue on. Wait. What is that? There's two brown creatures down there that are causing little ripples in the water. Uh, it could be some kind of a weird lake creature. The path is completely blocked by trees. I'm trying not to make any noise because I don't want to spook whatever those creatures are down there. I want to see what they are. It's got like a small head that's looking at us. This path here is completely overgrown. Guys, it looks like, is that an, it looks like an eagle in the water. Oh, look at this tree right here. Look at this tree. The mountain beaver was here. That's impressive. The work that a beaver can do. Look at that, he's taken down pretty much half of this tree. Oh, it's a couple of geese. Oh, they're, they're wild mountain geese. Look at that, they're out on the ice right now. Why were their heads like in the water? Is that how geese sleep? <laughs> Sorry, you two. It didn't mean to startle you. That was so weird. Their heads were like laying in the water. It, it, for, I thought it was an eagle that had like fallen in and was drowning or something. All right, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a couple of casts with the bullet lure. And it's gonna be really tricky. There's so many logs. We might have to find a better spot, but I'm just curious if we can see a, oh my. Oh, no, 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 no. If we can see any kind of follow, any kind of commotion in the water. Yo. All right, let's go ahead and just get that net ready, just in case things get crazy all of a sudden. We're gonna try and find a better spot, get a little closer uh, down. Oh, oh my goodness, I just fell into a hole. Just fell into a hole, what? Oh my, I, just, I mean, I went my hole, I went down to the knee into this hole here. It's like a beaver cave or something. My goodness, a mountain beaver almost got me, you guys. Whew, that'll wake you up more than that coffee earlier. All right. Maybe we can catch something though. Perfect cast. We're gonna try and fish uh, close to the ice here because I feel like trout, when there's still ice on a lake, I do pretty bad actually at those lakes um in the, the the clear water because i feel like the the trout are hanging out underneath the ice it's like a safe area for them or something they like being in the shade and then once the ice melts off then the trout they just kind of move all over the place but whenever you've got these half frozen lakes i definitely struggle uh, a lot catching fish around then so we're just going to stick close very close to the ice here see if a brave trout soul wants to come out and take a look at this bullet lure 
We're just gonna cast it right onto that ice. Ooh, it's actually like slush. There we go, natural presentation. Bullet lure just kind of dropped from the ice to the water. Just like a little, little frog or something. A little critter that was up on the ice and fell in. Gotta be a hungry trout over there. Let's try that again onto the ice and drop in the water. Now it might've been really stupid to waste that beef stick because what I just realized is we could have tried using that as crawdad bait here. I know there's crawdads in this lake and we would just need a little bit of bait to lure them out from like holes like that. Maybe the beaver cave is like filled with a family of hungry mountain crawdads. And if we put that beef stick there, they would come out. So, ah, man, all right, let's try and just get that bullet lure out there. We're gonna thread the needle, thread the needle, perfect cast, and get way, way out there. There we go. Oh man, we're gonna have to go. Oh! No, it's a snag. No, no, no. I thought, man, I thought that was a giant trout. <laughs> Best bite ever. Oh, there we go. We got the bullet lure back. Perfect, perfect. Between these logs right here. Oh, oh no, it's just a little twig. Whew, man. Man, fooled me twice on that cast. There is a very, very good chance that we could uh, get snagged up and lose our lure here just because we've only got a few inches. Uh, of water to fish and under that is a whole bunch of logs and branches All right, let's work our way across uh, the lake here a little bit oh man there's so many holes here what is this like was there a landslide here it almost looks like the hillside kind of came down a little bit everything looks really weird here oh. Oh. Look at this spot right here. Got a bit of an overhanging branch there. So what we're just gonna do is, uh, oh, he's trying to shoot the bullet lure in there. There we go, perfect. Perfect cast. Come on, baby. Come on. Nothing. There we go. Avoided all the weeds and stuff oh oh <laughs> it felt so good that felt so good but it was a branch <laughs> oh what's that is it the beaver nah it's not a beaver it's some kind of a weird little mountain marmot or something ah. all right man i guess this is the worst kind of ice it's uh ah, it's still there but it's probably too thin to actually go out on we can maybe test the uh thickness with a rock here oh <laughs> the rock kind of smushed its way in so it's just a big like a slush hmm it does give me an idea though so if the trout are still under the ice we Smash a hole in the ice from up here and then try and fish that hole. Here, let's give this a shot. Ugh. All right. All right, that's an ice hole right there. Probably scared away every trout within a mile radius right here, but, but that's okay. Now we'll just try and cast it right in that hole or right above it and then work the lure right into the hole. There we go. We're about two feet under the ice there and we can just give it some little, little vertical jigs like this. And uh, maybe we can lure in a hungry trout. <laughs> there might be one down there taking a look at it right now. Come on, baby. Just one little nibble. I brought uh, the rest of the gear over here. Uh, I just had an idea. What we're gonna do is switch our bobber uh, rig, which is gonna be pretty much useless here uh, with these conditions. We're gonna switch that over to a bottom rig and we're gonna try and punch a hole further out on the ice and send a bottom rig down there and try and bottom fish for these trout.
All right, you can see we've got a sliding uh, weight set up right there. It's just a bottom fishing, like a Carolina rig, and a uh, little tiny hook on some four pound leader, probably about two and a half uh, feet long. And what we're gonna use as bait here is just a little bit of some, some pink, pink power bait. <laughs> That's all I had right now. Just get a little glob of that and surround the hook with it. Now this stuff here is gonna try and float. So the goal is gonna be to sink this down to the bottom where this here just floats a couple of feet up from there and maybe a hungry trout will see it. <laughs> it didn't go through, no. All right, let's try that again. No, oh, it almost went through. All right, we're gonna try and throw it up as far as possible so it comes down with some good downward force to break through the ice. Ah, yes, and we're gonna cast this bad boy right up past it. There we go. There we go. There we go. Come on, baby. Sink. Sink. No. No, it didn't go. Didn't sink in there. Man, I thought for sure that the lead weight would easily sink through that. Uh, that ice. Yes, we got it in the hole. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set this rod up and we're gonna take a little bell and uh, hang that little bell right here. This way when something bites, <laughs> we'll hear it. I've really got my hopes up on this guy here. So keep your eyes on that rod tip if you see it move or something like that. All right, time for the main course. Uh, we're gonna try out this <laughs> MRE heater again. Uh, you guys know I've had the worst luck with these things. And a lot of you guys in the comments have given me some tips. And one thing that someone said was really try and get some water in there and just crunch it up a lot. So I don't know if we've tried that yet. This is like a heating element that reacts uh, with water and causes heat to cook our MRE. In theory, you put in a little bit of water. Oh, that was way too much. Now let me know, do you guys overfill or underfill? It says right on there, do not overfill. <laughs> I mean, guys, keep in mind, uh, these things are six years old. I think we're eating cold beans, boys and girls. <laughs> all right, that's all right, I'm hungry enough. We'll just let that baby sit there for a second and just as an experiment, see if it, see if it warms up at all. It smells really, really good. Now we've got our vegetable crackers. <laughs> oh, there we go, only the best. Look at those babies. Let's try a little little crumble. Oh man, they just never, never disappoint. A little on the dry side. So how about we use that uh, cheese spread and throw that on the crackers. I think that might help out just a little bit. <laughs> oh, it's thick. It is thick, you guys. And we can smear that cheese around just a little. Mm. All right, cheesy crumbly cracker with cold chili mac. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if this thing here has gotten warm at all. Oh yeah, you know, it is actually warm, but it should be like boiling. Like it's not going to necessarily heat up our our food, but you know, it feels kind of like a lukewarm hand warmer. This is kind of nice actually. It's starting to get really cold, guys. The uh, sun kind of set behind uh, the mountain there. All right, so the, the, that trick of really crushing up that little heating element in there seemed to have done a little bit. It's better than nothing, but it's definitely not what it should be. This baby here should be at a rolling boil and steaming. Mm. Look at that. Just 
Look at that luxury meal right here. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of that cheese out of here. Out of curiosity, I want to know what this peppermint candy ring is. <laughs> I'm imagining like a lifesaver or something like that. Ooh, ooh, the smell. Just in your face, peppermint. It, it is a lifesaver. <laughs> what are the odds of that? What in the world? Why would I want like a whole pack of these? I'd way rather have like another cracker or something. Just one to freshen up the palate. Hmm. Refreshing. Uh, we are abandoning uh, this spot here. I've lost faith in our ice holes out there. So we're gonna try and uh, get over to where that creek flows into the lake. Let me know in the comments what you guys think the trout are currently up to in this semi-frozen lake. Would they be hanging out over at the creeks? Or do they like to hide under the ice? What's your guys' experience? This is definitely uh, going to be bullet lure territory. Maybe we can climb out on these locks. So many snags. So many. We're going to be very lucky if we can successfully fish this right here. Oh, perfect cast. Perfect. Oh, what just happened? Oh, I think we got stuck in a little stick or something. All right. You know, really where I want to get is right there. And I think we might be able to climb out those logs and get over there. We're going to be really, really quiet as we approach over here, looking out for any trout that might be holding. Not seeing any trout right here. There was a trout here where we for sure spooked it. So this area right here is what I'm excited to fish or even just take a look at here. Here, how about we just dangle the bullet or just give it a couple of jigs right here. See if anyone's anyone's at home here between these logs. All right, we're gonna fish over these trees here, which is a horrible idea, but really it's the only option that we have here. And then as we get here, we can just kind of flip the bullet lure over them. There we go. Oh no, got stuck on a tree underwater. <laughs> Guys, this is impossible to fish, but not impossible. We've caught one here before, but it, oh wow, it's definitely a mess. The creek is pretty flooded right now for sure huh yeah not seeing any in here oh wow the trail here is completely flooded ah. wow look at this Beautiful. The water in this lake here is a lot more clear than uh, the lower lake, so maybe, maybe we'll have more luck uh, at this spot. I tell you what, let's just go ahead and send the bottom rig here right out to the ice on there and then we'll drop it off right here at the edge there we go just down there that way this here is fishing right next to the uh the edge there i just gotta stick the pole right in the snow perfect Wow. 
onto the ice and drop it in the water. I'm shedding out on a log here. I remember seeing a trout once, just kind of right down underneath here. It's kind of a deep hole right here. Nothing. <laughs> Just look at this place though. It's like something from a different world. A lost world. I'd love to keep fishing up here, but uh, the GoPro, I've only got about three more minutes of SD card uh, space left on that baby and the trout, they're just <laughs> they're just not in the mood right now. But that's okay, the uh, mountain lakes are going to get really, really hot for trout here uh, in the next few weeks, probably by the end of the month. Uh, this lake, as well as many others, are gonna be just filled with hungry trout. And we'll be out there chasing those babies all summer long, catching cooks, camping, backpacking, and uh, survival videos. <laughs> all right, bit of a situation here. Bit of a situation we got a survival video after all um not actually very fun i mean it's is what it is i've got survival uh gear in the truck we could live out here for probably a week but look at this this is pretty bad i was trying to do a turn here kind of slipped into some deeper snow right there than i thought so what i'm doing i shoved some branches in there and didn't really uh that didn't get very far so i'm just gonna dig this baby out and uh whew, man could take a little while though So GoPro memory is full. What I'm just doing right now is digging out as much snow as I can. Something I noticed right away, just digging the, the snow out from under the car is I've been slacking on not having my gloves. I should have some good utility gloves inside the car. That would make the digging a lot easier. And if whenever we're going to snow country like this, we should have a snow shovel with us at all times. There's no excuses, uh, some chains. So these are rookie mistakes <laughs> on my part, totally. But you know what? So what it's all about is just kind of learning from uh, one person's mistakes. Hopefully I can help out uh, some other people. I did also check out down there, there's a clearing uh, right there. We should be able to turn the truck around down there. We're not gonna be able to uh, turn around right here in this spot. Man, a shovel sure would be nice right now. All right, we've got about half the forest underneath the truck there. So I haven't been filming a whole lot. I don't have a tripod for the phone or anything. This is the only scooper I've got. We've got that whole side dug out and just shoved a bunch of branches uh, in, hopefully back here to get the wheel starting. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, I just wish it weren't uh, getting dark. What in the world is that? Oh, I think that was just some kind of weird bird. Uh, oh man, this is where the gloves sure would be nice. All right, let's give this a try. Oh, and guys, to add on to the whole thing, I broke one of my uh, rules uh, here on this trip. Check that out. Oh, oil change required. Look at this. I just kind of winged it uh, today, and we only got 16 miles left. For situations like this, you definitely want more fuel in your tank. It could keep you warm. It'll give you more options. All right, let's not waste any time. I'm just gonna set the phone down. I can't really, I gotta concentrate here. Oh man, we just dug ourselves even deeper. Ah, it's crushing guys, crushing. Not gonna lie, we just moved another, probably four inches this way. I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, I've only gotten stuck in the snow once before years ago with the van. Well, here we are, we're stuck again. And I keep sinking deeper and deeper. It is getting dark. If I did not have uh, the animals and the dogs, especially uh, alone at home right now, I would probably just rough it out for the night and continue digging tomorrow. I just don't know. I think there might be like a ditch right here that I'm actually stuck in. And I am starting to high center on the truck. So I'm making the call. I'm tapping. I'm tapping, guys. Sometimes you got to know when to call for help. So um that's just what we're gonna do i called my neighbor i was able to luckily get a call through 
text messages were not going through at all. It's just one of those stupid mistakes, guys. Uh, I generally am very prepared for a lot of things, but I think we one of the biggest mistakes that we can make is becoming complacent uh, with, with many things, be that at home or just uh, going out. All right, we're just going for a little hike. We don't need to bring our knife or some extra clothes or some food or water along. Man, guys, when you're out here, always have your 10 essentials with your basic survival gear. Uh, when it really comes down to it, we could survive the night. We could survive several nights here making fires and I've got food, I've got water. But uh, the emergency here is that we can't leave the animals unattended uh, at home at the farm. They, they need water. I have to get to the dogs. So we don't have another option. We have to get out here uh, tonight. Time is ticking. All right. We are just going to get a little fire started here. Use one of those little um, solid fuel tablets to kind of get things started up here. Everything is actually pretty damp. There you go, baby. Oh, yes. Now the fire here obviously is gonna keep us warm, but it's also gonna help uh, kind of signal to my neighbor um, when he gets close. He should be able to find me. Beautiful night out here. Absolutely beautiful. Oh man, this fire feels really, really good. It uh, is definitely below freezing uh, right now. Now the sun's down, it got cold. We're at high elevation, so it gets cold here at night. I have a wool blanket inside the truck there. We could probably even try and dry these boots. Look how split open those things are. Oh man, these things have been through it. Definitely not waterproof anymore, huh? <laughs> oh, crazy, I need to get some new ones. I'm gonna conserve uh, battery power on the phone, so I'll update you guys. Uh, on what happens next. I'm throwing some dirt is... under the wheels here. Oh, there we go. Yep. Oh, I'm pulling out all the wood again. And... There we go. Yeah, I brought you it. Nothing. Yeah. You just sit there and spun Oh yeah, no, it's every. It would just spin, and we were moving sideways. Oh, yeah, they brought a shovel out. A bunch of saviors here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh my goodness we just got her busted loose so i'm just gonna park uh right here we're gonna check out there's another spot uh further up here where turning around should be a little bit easier guys teamwork having neighbors having friends very important don't think you can just solo everything uh they are following right now we're going through some pretty deep stuff we cannot stop oh my goodness guys we got to keep that momentum going to get out of here i'm actually gonna put the phone away need to concentrate here so i'll update you guys when we hopefully get out of here <laughs> that was the most ridiculous deep snow that we that i've ever just driven through almost got stuck several times uh we're now facing downhill on a safe spot so i'm gonna go ahead and check in with them we just barely barely made it out of here that was absolutely insane. It's funny how much things like this, like pulling up into your driveway, it's something that we don't appreciate <laughs> enough. I can get into the whole like, comment, subscribe thing, but the main thing that I wanted to leave this video with is be prepared. Be prepared for the unknown. Um, it's why I enjoy sharing my fishing and survival missions and stuff like that with you guys. Uh, it's not just so that you can learn from me, but also so that you can learn from my mistakes. I just simply got sloppy, and I'll be completely honest about it, by not having my car kit uh, complete before going up into the mountains. And not filling up the truck before going up there too. But in case you have a Ford F-150, uh, uh, just so you know, when it says zero miles, you still got a couple miles of gas in there. Uh, anyways, I love you guys. We'll see you very soon then for the next fishing adventure. Hopefully not a survival, like a situation like that. Ah, uh, it was fun though. It was fun. Learned a lot. So love you guys. We'll see you for the next one. Until then you all know it. Fish on baby.